welcome to vlsi design lecture series in today's lecture video i'll be discussing about static random access memory s ram we already know the classification of semiconductor memories majorly semiconductor memories are subdivided into read only memory and random access memory which is as shown in this particular figure semiconductor memories are majorly subdivided into two variations read only memory and random access memory read only memory is again subdivided into four major classifications masked programmable read only memory programmable read only memory erasable programmable read only memory electrically erasable programmable read only memory random access memory is again subdivided into two variations static ram and dynamic ram our area of interest in today's video lecture is static ram the memory circuit is said to be static if the data which is stored can be retained indefinitely as long as power supply is turned on without any need for periodic refresh operation the data which is stored or data storage cell that is one bit memory cell in the static ram arrays it invariably consists of simple lat circuit with two stable operating points depending on the preserved state of the two inverter lat circuit the data being held in the memory cell will be interpreted either as logic level 0 or logic level 1 to access the data which is contained in the memory cell we use something called as bit line we will be needing at least one switch which is controlled by corresponding word line which can be easily understood by means of a figure so uh, for sram the memory element or the storage of the data will be uh, done by means of a latch or two inverters which are cascaded in parallel we will be using two switches on either side of the inverters those two switches is controlled by word line and the other input other terminal of the switches will be connected to bit line it can be easily understood by means of this diagram this is a static ram cell single bit static ram cell if you observe we are making use of two switches and those two switches are controlled by word line normally these switches whatever we use here is n channel mosfets one terminal of this switch is connected to bit bar, bit line the um, other terminal of this switch is connected to inverter which is cascaded in parallel similarly one terminal of this second switch is connected to bit bar line and the other terminal of switch is connected to inverters the memory or the main element which is used to store the data is this inverters which are cascaded in parallel whether the data should be stored or it, it has to be written or it has to be read that will be decided by this switch and that too it will be decided by this word line depending upon the input which we have given to the word line it decides whether write operation should be performed or read operation should be performed under write operation the data which is present in the bit line will be read into the or will be written into the inverter cell under read operation whatever data which is stored here will be read into the bit lines so we can easily understand the operation of it by means of circuit diagrams and again sram stands for static random access memory static means it holds the data as long as power is applied to it it is volatile in nature which cannot hold the data if power supply is removed there are three major states of operation with respect to sram hold state write state and read state these are three states which are applicable so we'll understand all these three states in detail with the help of circuit diagrams so basic six transistor sram cell it consists of these elements the reason why we use six transistors is if you observe here we are using two inverters to store the data an inverter consists of two mosfets p channel mosfet and n channel mosfet 
So an inverter consists of two MOSFETs. Two inverters are there, so four MOSFETs here. Fifth MOSFET M1, sixth MOSFET M2. So we will be using six transistors. We'll be using a bistable cross-coupled inverters for storage purpose. For storage of logic level zero or logic level one, we will be using two cross-coupled inverters, which is shown by means of cursors here. And we also have two access transistors, M1 and M2. These access transistors are used to access stored data for both read operation as well as write operation. And these access transistors, both M1 as well as M2, is controlled by word line. So if you observe in this particular figure, there are two access transistors, M1 and M2, which are nothing but MOSFETs, N channel MOSFET. As you already know, MOSFET, theoretically, we consider that there are three terminals, gate terminal, source terminal, and train terminal. Similarly, with respect to M2, gate terminal, source terminal, and train terminal. And this n channel MOSFET turns on when the gate input is made equal to high. So when word line is equal to zero, the operation which is performed by this SRAM is hold operation. When word line is equal to one, the operation which is performed by SRAM is read operation or write operation. So we'll understand how this happens in detail by means of circuit diagrams. First, let us understand how hold operation is performed. To perform this hold operation, word line should be made equal to zero. So when word line is made equal to zero, this input zero, word line is equal to zero is connected to gate terminal of M1 MOSFET as well as gate terminal of M2 MOSFET. So because of that, both M1 MOSFET as well as M2 MOSFET is off. As we already know that, N channel MOSFET turns on only when its logic level input is high, gate level input is high. So when the gate logic is equal to zero, both is M1 as well as M2 MOSFETs are off. So when both M1 as well as M2 are off, it acts as a open switch. Open switch in sense, there is no connection between the source terminal and the drain terminal of M1 MOSFET, as well as source terminal and drain terminal of M2 MOSFET. So there is no connection between source and drain, this bit as well as bit bar, these two lines, whatever is there, it is no way connected to the inverter here. And the data which is present in the latch will be held as it is. For example, if the data which is present in this latch or inverter is, inverter, cross-coupled inverter is logic level high, it will be as it is. But it's logic level zero, it will be as it is. It will be in the whole state. Next, let us understand how write operation is performed. To perform write operation, the word line will be made equal to one. So when word line is made equal to one, both the access transistors are on because word line is made equal to one. The gate terminal of M1 MOSFET as well as gate terminal of M2 MOSFET is connected to word line. So both these MOSFETs are on because N channel MOSFET turns on when its gate input is logic level high. So both these M1 as well as M2 MOSFETs are on. When the MOSFETs are on, it acts as a closed switch. And when it acts as a closed switch, there's a definite connection established between the source terminal of the M1 as well as the drain terminal of the M1. Similarly, there is a definite connection established between the source terminal of the M2 and the drain terminal of the M2. So whatever data which is present in this bit as well as bit bar, that can be written into this cross-coupled inverter, which is used for storage purpose, or the data can be easily written. Let us consider bit is equal to logic level zero. Bit input is equal to logic level zero. So if bit input is logic level zero, bit part should definitely be one. Because these two access transistors are on, it acts as a closed switch. So this bit zero will be transferred to the input stage of inverter one. The output stage of inverter one will be logic level high. The output stage of inverter one is connected to input stage of inverter two. So the input for this inverter two is again one. The output of this inverter will again be zero. So if you observe, this particular cross-coupled inverter stores the data or it writes the data. So this is how the write operation is performed. Similarly, let us consider how read operation is performed. So again, for read operation, the word line should be equal to one. When word line is equal to one, 
both the access transistors are on because the gate input of this M1 as well as M2 MOSFET is given with logic level high. Both these MOSFETs are on. If both the MOSFETs are on, it acts as a closed switch and there is a different connection established between the source and the drain terminals of the MOSFET. In MOSFET, we are already familiar that the source and the drain terminals are interchangeable. Now, the data which was previously stored in this cross-coupled inverter was zero towards the bit line, one towards the bit bar line. So because both these MOSFETs are on, because there is a closed switch connection, closed circuit connection established between this bit terminal to this inverter, cross-coupled inverter, zero will be written in bit input or bit output and one will be written to bit bar line. So by this, we can easily read the data which is present inside the unit as well. So this is how read operation is performed in SRAM. The SRAM which we have considered here is six transistor SRAM, two transistors for inverter one, two transistors for inverter two, one each transistor for access, so 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, which gives us 6 transistors. So this is how hold operation, write operation, as well as read operation is performed. I hope that you have understood this video lecture. Thank you.